As you start to focus on the breath, it's good to make a survey of three things. First, the breath itself. Take some good, long, deep in and out breaths, and think of the whole body breathing. It's not just the lungs, not just the nose. The whole nervous system is involved in the breathing, <clears throat> in the breathing process. If there's any area in the body where the breath is not flowing smoothly, see if you can relax it to allow the breath to flow. And that connects with a second thing to survey, which is the feelings in the body. Can you find a sense of ease someplace in the body related to the breath? If you can, try to maintain that. Make sure that when you breathe in and breathe out, you don't squeeze that spot or make it tense. You don't have to put a little squeeze at the end of the in-breath or at the end of the out-breath to mark the switch between the two breaths. Let them flow into each other, because after all, it is breath flowing into breath. There's no clear boundary line. And then make a survey of your mind. Is the mind ready to settle down? Sometimes this is the big problem. The breath is okay. The feelings in the body are okay. They might not be perfect everywhere, but at least you can find something that feels good. But the mind is carrying lots of attitudes, lots of problems from the day. You've got to work on it. In other words, what you're doing is you're surveying the first three of the frames of reference under right mindfulness, body, feelings, mind. And the mind is the problem, and you have to work on the mind in and of itself. What does that mean? It means you look at your ideas not in terms of their content, not whether they're right or wrong. You can think about all the injustices that have been served out to you in the course of the day or over the past year or so. And it's right, but it's making you suffer right now, which means it's not the right time for that. That's how you look at them, these things. What are these thoughts doing to you, and where are they coming from? Are they coming from skillful motives, or are they coming from unskillful ones? This is looking at the mind in and of itself. Where do the thoughts come from? What do they do to the mind? You're looking at them as part of a causal process. And they may be perfectly right, but their rightness is making you suffer right now. So you've got to get past them. This is when you start using whatever techniques the Buddha advises. Goodwill to counteract ill will. Contemplation of death to counteract laziness. In other words, realizing you don't know how much time you've got, so you can't let yourself be lazy. You've got to work now, because now is all you've got, for sure. The future is not sure at all. Contemplation of the body to counteract thoughts of lust. In other words, you do what you can to keep these thoughts in check and to encourage ones that are more conducive to getting the mind to settle down. For instance, if you're thinking thoughts of goodwill, first it's goodwill for yourself, and you ask yourself, if you really had goodwill for yourself, would you let yourself get in, spend a whole hour thinking about thoughts of revenge or thoughts of discontent? So that thought of goodwill brings you back to the breath. Same with contemplation of the body. The Buddha doesn't say the body is totally bad, simply that if you use it as an object of lust, you're misusing it. There are better uses for the body, like focusing on the breath. In particular, if you want to understand the reasons why the mind can make the body look attractive one moment and unattractive in another, and go for the unattractive or go for the attractive. You need to develop more mindfulness, more alertness. And where do you do that? You go back to the breath. In other words, you use your thinking to bring you around to the breath. 
and to counteract whatever thoughts or other attitudes in the mind would get in the way. So looking at your thoughts in this way it is called looking at the mind in and of itself, to see when it needs to be steadied, to see when it needs to be gladdened, given energy, when it needs to be released from thoughts. that are weighing it down. This comes under several factors on the right path. You might remember that passage where the Buddha talks about how he got on the path to begin with, when he divided his thoughts into two sorts, the skillful ones on one side the unskillful ones on the other side. And he defined these in terms of, defined these in terms of right resolve. But looking at them in terms of where they came from, where they lack. That's looking at them in terms of right mindfulness and making the effort to curb the ones that are unskillful. That's right effort. To encourage the ones that were skillful. That's right effort. And above all, realizing that if the mind is suffering, even though there may be bad things happening outside, the suffering is coming from within. You can't keep blaming other people for your suffering. Right view is. If you want to look at the reasons for your suffering, you have to look inside. Then you have to step out of the thought worlds that would pull you outside to keep this perspective, watching them simply as events coming and going in the mind, and they're coming from a place and they're going someplace. And if you don't watch out, they're going to lead you to do things that are unskillful, to say things that are unskillful, to think out more things that are unskillful. All that comes under right view. You may remember that passage where the Buddha said that for each of the factors of the path, there are three factors that circle around it, right view, right effort, right mindfulness. As soon as you're trying to get the mind in shape, that's part of your right resolve. But that right resolve is informed by right view. Right effort is what carries out the resolve. Right mindfulness is what gives you the right frame of reference to look at these thoughts as events coming and going, and not get all tied up in whether your thoughts are right or not, but simply see them as part of a process that's going on in the mind that's creating suffering. When you take this perspective, it helps you step back from your thoughts. and realize that they're not really worth going with. Even skillful thoughts that would take you away from the breath or otherwise skillful thoughts are not what you need right now. What you need is to get back to the breath to develop qualities like more mindfulness, more alertness, more ardency. Because you realize there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the mind. You sit here and there's nothing to bother you. The temperature outside is almost perfect. It's quiet, and yet the mind can still create suffering for itself. It's got this potential inside. As long as it's got that potential, there's work to be done. And you bring it to the breath to do that work. This way, once you've surveyed the body and the feelings in the mind, you can bring them together, breathing in a way through the body that allows pleasure to fill the body. And so it feels good to have your awareness fill the body. So all three things are there together, filling the same space. That's how right resolve leads to, <coughs> leads to right concentration. The concentration that allows you to do this work with more precision in more places where you hadn't been able to do it before. So you can bring the path into your life. So that your life becomes a path. That's when it gets results. <laughs>